desires line up with his desires, then he answers your prayer. Yes. And then he gives you what you want because you're wrapped up in him. Can I get amen up in here? It's not naming and claiming. It's not because you think you want something. Come on, that's right. Come on, help me. It's not because you think you want something. It's what God knows you need. And when you get your heart lined up with his heart, you ain't going to want some of those things you've been wanting. Somebody help me now. Some things you're not going to want because God, because you, you're lined up with God's heart now. And you begin to want the things God wants for you. See, that's the key to that prayer, y'all. That's the key to that verse. Sometimes we want things we don't need. We want things God don't want us to have. So if he don't want you to have it, forget it. Let it down. You don't need it. Amen. We begin to hunger and thirst. And we want, Lord, what do you want in my life? Whatever you want, that's what I want. Praise God. Well, that's the, man, y'all, I'll tell you what. Help me, Lord. Help me to pray, uh, to preach in here today because there is an awesome presence of the Lord. Y'all, I mean an awesome presence. God is so good at church. He's just wonderful. I want you to stand up one time. Let me give you this um, scripture here. It's amazing what we've been talking about. Even when I come out from officers talking about, man, worshiping and praising the Lord. And God just really shown us something today, hadn't he? But I want you to look at your neighbor and say one. Well, go ahead and open up your Bible, first of all, to John 15, 1. That's the scripture we're going to wind up with in, in a little bit. But we've got to go to the Old Testament. To, we're going to go to the book of Isaiah. We're going to go to the book of Matthew. And we're going to end up in John. How about that? Praise the Lord. This is so important today, though, I think what God has put in our spirit or put in my spirit. But I want you to open up John 15, 1. And all I want to do is read these first, this first verse. And the Bible says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman and we're going to leave it right there for a minute okay i want you to get that in your spirit though jesus is speaking these words jesus says i am the true vine and my father is the husbandman father i thank you right now for your goodness your mercy your grace your awesome power lord touch all of our hearts here today father i lord right now i give you the praise I give you the honor and I give you the glory for your presence that you have manifested here among us right now. Over this congregation, Father, I thank you for your presence. Lord, I give you the praise for it. Lord, I thank you that you've used the people in this ministry today. You've to used these people for your glory, that you have spoken a word to your body. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. We give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I ask you to use this vessel. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Spirit of the living God that I might speak your word today. In the name of Jesus, and I give you the praise, glory, and the honor. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Y'all know what I'm going to say, don't you? Go ahead and give God some praise in the house. Amen. Give God a big old clap of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Worthy, 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 worthy is the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, I got to tell you, it's raining in here today. Praise the Lord. If you can, go ahead and be seated. I want you to look at your neighbor and say this. This is very important. This is the title that God birthed this in me this morning. I want you to look at somebody and say, say this. Stay connected. Come on. Look at somebody that you ain't looked at now and say, stay connected. Come on. Come on. Look at somebody else and say, stay connected. Come on, y'all. Whoo! That's amazing. I mean, I'm telling you, I haven't even talked to Stephanie this morning. But she's talking about the power being cut back on. Good Lord. This mess. I mean, it's amazing how God does things in it. But we need to stay connected. Can I get amen up in here? If you want God to really use you, you got to stay connected. Can I get another amen? Now, we're going to really get something here today. And I want to show you how God, oh, Lord, help me. This is so important. I want to show you how God, not that, he, not that he has done a new thing, because there's nothing new under the sun, but he did something new to reveal to the people. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? He done something that in time would be revealed. It's like sometimes things are hidden in God. Yes. Can I get an amen? And sometimes there's some things you just can't find out until you begin to get in his presence. So you begin to just pray and you, you get in the word of God and God begins to show you things. Now, God has always done that throughout his scripture. In the Old Testament, a lot of things or in the Old Covenant, 
people didn't have some of the understanding that we have today. Can I get an amen up in here? They had some understanding, but they didn't really understand it completely. And the reason they did not understand it completely is because it hadn't been fulfilled. Come on, y'all, because everybody thinks they got the end of the age figured out. Everybody thinks they know exactly how everything's going to happen at the end of the age before the Lord comes back. But I got news for you. Most, we really don't. We're digging and we're pulling and we're trying. But most of the time we don't understand things until they are fulfilled. Can I get amen? That's what prophetic word is all about. But we believe nonetheless. We believe what God says because he said it. Can I get another amen? Now we got a little bit of scripture here and I can't help it. I'm going to have to read you some scripture because I got to get you to the place that we just come to, which is John 15, 1. So if you want to look with me, you can go to Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5, and we're going to look at something in here that is so important, okay? This is how God established. This is how God, God is God. He can do whatever he wants. God chose a nation. God chose a people. And we're going to find out in Isaiah chapter 5, starting with verse 1, what he did. Now, as we read this, I want you to understand that Isaiah had the prophetic word. He had a revelation of what God was going to do to the nation of Israel. So with that, let's look at verse 1. He says, now, this is Isaiah speaking by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He said, now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. Verse 2 says, and he fenced it. It's like God fenced it in. He gathered out the stones. He got rid of all the stones, and he planted it with the choicest vine. He built a tower in the midst of it. He also made a wine press therein. He looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth what? Wild grapes. In other words, the vineyard that God had planted on this earth did not bring forth the fruit that he's looking for. Oh, somebody help me up in here now. Come on. God did everything to it. He fenced it in. He dug about. He did everything. He took care of that, that vine so that that vine could produce beautiful and awesome, massive grapes. But instead of bringing forth the fruit, the massive, awesome grapes that God is looking for, the grapes are wild. Now, that's what Isaiah is getting this prophetic word. I want you to see this. Get it in your spirit. Then he says in verse 3, Oh, now, and, oh, and now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. You be the judge of what I've done. Can I promise you and tell you that everything God does is good? Yeah. Everything he does is good. What man does ain't good. Now, watch this. He says, what could have been done more to my vineyard than I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth wild grapes. Verse 5, now go to. I'm going to tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I'm going to take away the hedge, and it's going to be eaten up. I'm going to break down the wall thereof, and it's going to be trodden down. And then he says in verse 6, I'm going to lay it waste. I want you to think about this for a minute. Isaiah's getting a prophetic word from God. He's telling him exactly what he's going to do. I'm taking the hedge down. It's going to be laid waste. Then he says, it shall not be pruned nor digged. Three says that because he's already dug around. He's already pruned. He's already done everything he's going to do. What's going to happen? What's he going to produce? Then he says right here, I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. And verse 7, here's the key. Verse 7 is the key to Isaiah chapter 5. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of who? So I want you to see something right here. This is very important. The vineyard right here he's talking about is Israel. That's what he says in his words. You can't argue with the word of God. Can I get amen up in here? He said, the house of Israel, you're the vineyard. And the men of Judah, listen to this. Men of Judah, you was the pleasant plant. That is very important. We'll be, we're going somewhere with this, and I want you to see it. He says, house of Israel, you are the vineyard. Judah, 
You're the plant. The leaders. Judah is the leadership, y'all. These are the leaders that God is looking to. These are the ones who are supposed to know the Word of God. These are the ones who are supposed to have the Word of God in them. They're the ones who are supposed to be teaching the people how to produce fruit or bring forth fruit. Can I get an amen up in here? This is what this is all about. Now, I want you to see this because this is so important where we're going to go. And then he said, he looked for judgment and behold, oppression. He looked for righteousness, but behold, a crime. God was looking for something in that nation. And that nation failed to do what God wanted to be done. We've got to understand that to the place we're going. It's just like the first man, y'all, Adam. Guess what? He failed in God's plan that God had for him. Now, I want you to understand this. We're not saying that God has gotten rid of Israel and cast them aside. By no means, we're not saying that. We're trying to learn a spiritual truth in here that God is going to have to show us in everybody so that he can do a work in our heart. See, you cannot have your faith in a nation or in a people or in nothing. You have got to have your faith in God, period. We're going to see that in this, okay? We can't argue with what God has spoken right here. Did you see that? Can I get another amen? Y'all stay with me. I don't want to lose you because I know this can be hard sometimes. But we're not talking about God just getting away from, just casting them out and ha not having nothing to do with them. I don't care if you're a Jew. I don't care if you're a Gentile. I don't care who you are. We all come to the same way to the Lord. Can I get another amen up in here? So it don't matter wh what nationality you've been born. I've said that and I've preached it all along. It doesn't matter. The, what does matter is that we come to Jesus. We come to know him. We're birthed into his kingdom. Can I get another amen? Now, here's what the reason I had to go back and read that is this is so important, y'all. When you go over here. And i got to find my page because I just lost it. Praise the Lord. When you go to Matthew, I want to take you to Matthew chapter 21. When Jesus come on the scene, y'all, and Jesus began to teach, let me tell you what he did. Jesus is speaking the same parable that Isaiah had in Isaiah chapter 5. He is speaking this word. So what I want you to see and understand is the Pharisees and the Sadducees all the leadership knew exactly what Jesus was saying. Can I get an amen up in here? Because they knew the scripture. They knew what Isaiah had prophesied. They knew what he had spoken. So what does Jesus do, y'all? He goes right back to the parable of Isaiah. And he begins to speak it in Matthew chapter 21, verse 33. And here's what the Lord says. He says, I want you to hear another parable. There was a certain householder. The householder here, y'all. Is God the Father? Can I get amen up in here? Now, excuse me for a minute. Okay, let's get back to it. He said, Here another parable. With, there's a certain householder which planted a vineyard. Who's the vineyard? Israel. Well, praise y'all. Y'all listening. Praise God. Okay, let's see. Gee, the Lord's going right back, y'all, to the scriptures. He showed them in the scripture. He said, And they planted a vineyard, that being Israel, okay? Because uh, all the kingdom of heaven was entrusted to Israel. And hedged it about. He dug a wine press. He built a tower. He let it out to husbandmen. He let it out to the leadership of Israel. He's let it out to the scribes, to the Pharisees, y'all, to the Sadducees. He's let, he, he's, it's like he says, here it is. I want you to take care of it, okay? You're the leadership. I want you to teach the people. Come on, y'all. I'm going to tell you who much is given, much is required. You can bet your bottom dollar, whatever you want to bet, that God has called me to pastor. He's going to hold me accountable for everything that comes out of my mouth. Everything. Every little word that comes through this pulpit, I am held accountable for it. Who much is given, much is required. Some people want to hurry up and get into a position. You better wait, wait and let God do it. Can I get another amen up in here? Let God raise you up and make sure you're speaking thus saith the Lord. Now, so they know what he's talking about. I want you to look at this thing, okay? He lent it out to them and he went to a far country. When the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen. He sent his servants, okay? He sent the prophets. He sent many men, many women of God that they might receive the fruits of it. But the husbandmen, the religious leaders, y'all, guess what they've done? They took his servants, the prophets, they beat them, one, and they killed another, and they stoned another. Think about that for a minute. Sometimes we think what God has given us is ours. Let me tell you, it ain't yours, it's God's. He said, I'm letting you take care of something for me. And when I'm letting you take, something, uh, take care of something for me, do it the way I want you to do it. 
See, here it is. Sometimes we get to a place and this is mine. Come on, y'all. I want you to see this. The scribes and the Pharisees had such a religious spirit about them. They thought everything. Look, we've got the, we, we're influencing the people. We're over the people. They belong to me. Come on. They ain't going to share them with nobody. Let me tell you. Pastors don't own people. I've said that over and over. Churches don't own people. God owns people. Come on, y'all. He owns all of us. We belong to him. But sometimes what God gives us, we think it belongs to us when it really, we all belong to the Lord. And we've got to learn and say, hey, the Lord is looking for something here. What you have is not yours, y'all. What you have belongs to God. You're just a steward of what God has given you. You're just a steward. So when God comes looking for something, guess what? He needs to find it. Can I get another amen up in here? Now, look, let's go just a little bit further because we've got to get all the way to John in a little bit. But it says he killed, he killed the prophets. And we know by looking at the scripture, you know what happened. My Lord, even Isaiah was put in a pit. Yeah. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. A lot of stuff happened, y'all. Verse 36, and again, he sent other servants, other prophets, other men and women of God. More, like, more than the first, they did the same thing to them likewise. But last of all, verse 37, he sent unto them his son, saying this, they will re reverence my son. Jesus came, y'all, as the only begotten Son of God. Surely to goodness, they'll believe the Messiah. Surely to goodness, they'll believe, I'm going to send my Son. Surely, they would want Him to be over the kingdom. Come on, y'all, somebody help me up here. This is really a kingdom thing. This is really a power struggle. This is really somebody who just wants to be an authority and forget about everybody else. Forget about the Son of God. We, he's not going to take our power. He's not going to take our authority. No, we're the ones in authority here. He ain't going to get none of it. Somebody help me up in here. This is exactly what the Lord is saying. You would not even reverence my son because of your wicked heart. Man's heart is so wicked. I know everybody in here thinks you don't got a wicked heart. You let your heart get away from the Lord a little bit. Come on. You get away from God and you see what comes out of your heart. You see what you begin to do. Oh, we're going to learn something up in here today, y'all. we got to stay connected. Stay, I'll say it again. Stay connected. Stay connected. Here they are, y'all. They have all this power, all this authority. They're the, non, they're the nonchalant here in Israel, in Jerusalem. They're the, they're the men and the women. That's why I get so sick when I see pastors or anybody else full of pride because God hates it. He's not going to share his glory with nobody, y'all. If we got pride, he'll strip you of it, I promise you. If you're going to be used to God, he has to strip all pride in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now, look at this thing, y'all. Let's go a little bit further. Last of all, he sent his son. Surely they'll reverence my son. But when the husbandman, that's the leadership, y'all, saw the son, here's what they said. He's the heir. Let's kill him. Let's kill him so we can get his inheritance. Yeah. Mm. Now we could really go somewhere with that, couldn't we? We really could, y'all. Because it seems like some of the leadership, according to Jesus, I'm not saying all of them, but some of the Pharisees and some of the scribes and some of the Sadducees must have knew he's the one. He's the Messiah. But listen, if he comes and takes over, where are we going to be at? We're going to lose our position. We're going to lose that authority. Oh, somebody help me. So what we're going to do, we're just going to kill him. We're just going to get rid of him. So, so, the, so when he's gone, we'll receive the inheritance. Let me just say a statement right here. You take Jesus out of the equation, you don't got no inheritance at all. Period. No. Somebody help me up in here. You take Jesus out of the way, you think he's going to steal his inheritance? Some, this world is in for a rude awakening, y'all. Anybody who thinks they can massacre, kill, crucify the Lord to take his inheritance is very foolish. Because you're talking about the only begotten Son of God. We're talking about Emmanuel, God in the flesh. We're talking about the one who came to save man. Amen. And they're thinking, oh, we're going to take his inheritance. Look at the word, y'all. Oh, Lord, this is so wonderful what God has shown me. We're fixing to get to, y'all. I love God's word. It says, they caught him. They cast him out of the vineyard 
and they slew him. And we know Jesus died on the cross. We know exactly they rejected as a whole. Praise God, there were some Jews in that bunch that did not reject him. Peter, James, John, come on, y'all. A lot of Jews, they just knew he's the Messiah. He's the one. And they latched on. They believed, praise God, just like people are believing today. But verse 40 says this, When the Lord, therefore, of the vineyard comes, what will he do unto those husbandmen? What will he do to those religious leaders? Well, it says in verse 41, he will miserably destroy those wicked men. And he'll put his vineyard out unto, unto other husbandmen from which, which shall render him the fruits of the season. When I read that and I read some stuff, let's, let me tell you this, y'all. Without Jesus, man has no hope, period. It don't matter how much wisdom, doesn't matter how much knowledge we think we have, y'all. Doesn't matter how much we think we know the Bible. Doesn't, mean, doesn't matter if we can quote the scripture. If we could quote every scripture in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, don't really matter. Come on, y'all. If you ain't got Jesus, we ain't got nothing. Thank you, Caroline. Without Jesus, y'all, we have nothing, period. That's God's plan. It's not man's plan. God did that. The world hates it again. People hate it. Religious people hate that. Amen. You got even prominent pastors today saying there's many ways to go to heaven. I promise you there's not. Broad is the way to destruction. There's only one way to go to heaven. That's through Jesus. He's the narrow way. Now, what God really showed me, this is so wonderful, y'all. And I want you to understand this right here. God really knows, because I don't want y'all to think I'm picking on Jews, because God knows the heart of every man. All of our hearts are wicked. Somebody help me up in here. See, we think if we'd have been that nation, if we'd have been that people, we wouldn't have done that. You don't know what you'd have done until you'd have been there. Somebody had me. James said he wouldn't have done it. <laughs> That's right. Amen. You don't know what you'd have done. You see what I'm saying? But the, and I praise God for what God had to do and what he did do. Think about this for a minute. We've talked about, look at everything we've talked about so far, y'all. We talked about the vineyard being Israel. We talked about the husband being the leadership, Judah, okay, the scribes, uh, you know, the different ones during that time. In the New Testament, we, the same thing. We see that, okay? But look what happens, y'all. This is what I love. When you get to John chapter 15, verse 1, look what God did. Look what the Lord did, y'all. We read it a while ago. Jesus said, I am the true vine. Israel, you're not the vine no more. <laughs> Israel, somebody coming up in here now. Israel, you're not the vine no more. I am. Jesus had to take that. Come on, y'all. Jesus had to take the place of Israel just like he has to take the place of every man because he is the great I am. He is the Lord God Almighty. He is the vine. That's what he says. He says, listen, people, I'm the true vine, not a nation, not a people, but me. Somebody help me up in here. And then he says this. We, we talked about the leadership being the husbandman. He said, and now look at this. My daddy, my father, he is the husbandman. No longer am I going to let religious leaders, come on, y'all. They got, they, they got to be out the way. I'm going to move those religious leaders out of the way. Now God is looking over. He's the husbandman of the vine of everything that's in him. We're going to go somewhere here in a minute, y'all. Come on. God is watching over the vine. Who is Jesus now? You see what I'm saying? Jesus had to take the place of everything and everybody in every nation, y'all. No nation can save you. Just because you're a Jew or you're of the nationality of Jews or you're in that nation, that's not going to save you. A lot of people think today because they're scribes and Pharisees over there now, they're saved because they're a Pharisee. They're saved because they're a Sadducee. They're saved because they're a Jew. They're saved because they think they're God's people. Let me tell you, the only ones that are God's people are those that are in Jesus. Come on. If you want to be God's person or God's people or God's nation, you got to be in, in Jesus, in Christ. Amen. So he says this now. This is important. Lord, help me up in here. I know this might mess up your theology, but I'm showing you what God said. Jesus said, I am the true vine now. Not the church, not Israel, not a nation. He is. He's the vine. And then he says again, my father is the husbandman. Now, think about this. God is watching over his vineyard. He's not trusting a nation, a people. He's not trusting anybody but himself because he knows the heart of man. He knows what's in the heart of man. All right, he personally, God is personally watching over what belongs to him. Now look at this. 
Anybody, I don't care who it is, and Mike and Fran can attest to this because they've been working in that, working that ground, tilling that soil, planting some stuff. Listen, I mean, Fran's out there throwing the fertilizer all over the place. Mike, Mike told me yesterday, said that woman's out there. Before I could turn around, she done had three bags of fertilizer or whatever it was. Just sold out all over her. I mean, she was through, y'all. She just to getting it. But let me tell you this, y'all. They're not getting it, and they're not working just to be working. They're not getting out and tilling that ground and, and tending to those plants and tending to, to everything they got planted just to be doing it. They're not doing it just to get exercise, even though it is exercise. They're looking for something for all the work they're doing. Amen, come on. They're looking for something to come forth. They're looking for something to be produced. Now, if we do that in the natural, how much more do you think God is looking for stuff for the spiritual fruit in us? Somebody help me up in here. God ain't just got us here to look good, y'all. He ain't got us here to just to flex some muscles and say, oh, look at me. Look at the giant I am. Come on, y'all. He is looking for some fruit in us. Now, this is important where we're, where we're fixing to go, okay? Anybody, anybody knows, anybody who ever plants a vineyard is looking for something. They're looking for fruit. If you, if you plant tomatoes, you're looking for tomatoes. If you plant squash, you're looking for squash or cucumbers, whatever. Now, Jesus says in verse 4, look at this. The only way fruit can come forth is to what? Look at verse 4. What does it say? Chapter 15, verse 4. The Bible says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot. Everybody say cannot. Cannot, cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the what? In the vine. And we know the vine is Jesus. Amen? And said, no more can you except you abide in me. Now, this is important, y'all. Because everybody's always wanting to go forth doing something. Oh, Lord, hit me. I've got to show you this before I get too far ahead. Let me show you this. I want to show you three steps first. Last Sunday, y'all, I ain't going to ask you because you might not remember. What I preached about the title. It was come unto me. Anyway, that's all right. Jesus, I'm going to give you three steps right here that I think are very important. Jesus says to people, he says, come unto me. That's in the scripture. That's in the word. He says, come unto me. When a man comes to Jesus, it's like, I said, Dana, come, unto, come here, hon. Well, they don't say that. Wait a minute. Let me get my shoes on. <laughs> Look, right, she come to me. You see what I'm saying? I want you to see this. That's step number one. When Jesus says, come to me, and people come to him. Then he says this, step number two. He says, follow me. Come on, just follow me. Oh, watch out, baby. <laughs> Woo! Follow me, baby. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. He says, follow me. Now, what I want you to think about this. is important, y'all. That's step number two. Everybody in here is married. Don't you want your wife to be there with you, following you when you're doing what's right and doing what's now that you're treading over, my Lord, I, I like this woman right here next to me, close to me. But that's, the, that's step number two, follow me. But then there's a step number three. Here's what I want you to see. Those that come to him, those that follow him, step number three is what? Abide in me. Come on, church, abide. Yeah, baby, you can sit on my lap. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> She said, can, you, can I sit on your lap? I love to sit on the lap of Jesus. Amen. Come on, y'all. See that? See the steps, though. I want you to think about it. Come unto me. Come on, y'all. Follow me. And see, when you get those two steps, guess what? Then we abide in him. It's like when you get married. You, you, it's like you're together. It's like you're one. It's like a husband and wife. The Bible says they're what? One flesh. That's the way it's supposed to be. Amen. So Jesus is saying, I, you, first of all, you come to me. You follow me. You learn my ways. You get in the word of God. You see what I require of you. You see what I would like for you to do. Okay? You follow me. You learn of me. And then comes the abiding. When you get in the presence of an almighty God, you enter into the holy of holies. Somebody help me up in here. Where you just sit down, you and the Lord. Can I promise you, you can abide in Christ. Now, here's the key. There's a lot of people who want to come to Jesus, but they don't want to follow him. Then there's a lot of people who want to follow Jesus, but they don't want to abide in him. Somebody help me up in here, and I'm trying to show you the only way fruit can come forth from your life is if you're on number three, 
is abiding in Christ. And I'm going to show you that in the Word. Now look at this right here, y'all. This is so important. We have to learn to abide in Him. It's the only way a person can bear fruit is to abide in Jesus. The branch, listen to me, church, the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. That's what he said in the Word. That's what he said. He said, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, except it abide in Jesus. Now, I'm going to give you all some awesome points right here if you write these down. If you miss them, I'll give them to you later after service. But we think, this is the mentality of man. We think the production of fruit is our responsibility. Now, I want you to really think about this for a minute. We think the production of fruit is our responsibility. Guess what? It's not. That's right. It ain't. It ain't. It's not our responsibility, y'all. The fruit ain't. Watch this. God produces fruit through the vine. Come on. And the vine is Jesus. Unto the branches, which is what we are. We're the branches. We're the believers. Amen. They who are in the vine or attached to the vine or those who are connected, abiding in the vine, bring Fruit, bring forth fruit naturally. It just comes forth in a spiritual sense. You see what I'm saying? Because we're connected to the source. We're connected to the vine. Oh, Lord, somebody help me up in here. Verse 5 says this. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me, I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. Think about that. You cannot bring forth fruit unless you're attached, connected, or abiding in the vine. And see, the fruit's not coming from you. Oh, Lord, help me up in here. The fruit comes from the vine. The source is the vine. The source is Jesus. My Lord, somebody help me up in here. When you're connected to him, he can do anything with a branch he wants to. When you're connected, good Lord, can you imagine what God can do in your life? Because you're connected to the vine. Your nourishment, everything you need is coming from that vine. Now, I want you to see this because this is so important. A man will always bear the fruit to the thing he's connected to. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's why you see so much mess sometimes around you, in the body, in the church, or wherever. Because they hooked, they're connected. To the wrong source. When you are connected to the right source. When you are connected to the vine. When you're connected to Jesus. I promise you. What goes through Jesus is a coming to you. Hallelujah. What comes through him just comes through you. You're the branch on the vine. Good Lord. Can you see that? So whatever you're connected to, that's the kind of fruit you're going to produce in your life. Period. Well, that's what's going to come forth. You ain't producing nothing. Remember, it all comes from the Lord. It all comes from the vine. And all that comes from God. So what's your, the, 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 the fruit that's coming from you shows what you're attached to. You've got to understand that. Can I get another amen up in here? Now, the fruit that comes from Jesus, the fruit that flows through the Lord, the fruit that comes from the Father, the fruit that the Spirit of God is, has with him, in him, throughout him, who produces, is found in Galatians chapter 5. Come on, y'all. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit, and that's the same Spirit that's in Jesus, is the same Spirit that's going to be in the branches. Can I get another amen up in here? You can tell a lot about a branch by the way it acts. Let me say that one more time. You can tell a lot about a branch by the way it acts. Because if that branch is really connected to the vine, he's going to be acting like the vine. Can I get another amen? The fruit of the Spirit is this, y'all. If you're connected to Jesus, if there's a connection there to the vine, this is what's going to be coming forth from your body that's coming forth from you. And here it is, y'all. This is awesome. It's found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Guess what? The last part of that says against what? What does it say? Against such what? 
oh, Lord, you need to get that in your spirit. Against such, there is no law. What is that saying? That is saying when we abide in Christ, we abide in Jesus, and the fruit of the Spirit is flowing forth through, the, through us. You don't got to worry about the law of God. You don't got to worry about the commandments of God because I promise you, you'll be walking in them. You'll be walking just like, see, there, there's no law against that. You see what I'm saying? It's all so backwards today. Everybody's saying you got to do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do that. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. And God is saying, no, forget all that mess. Hook up to me. Connect to me. Connect to me so I can get, so I can get that fruit flowing forth through you. Connect it to me. You don't got to worry about no laws. Come on, come up to me. You'll love the way you're supposed to love. Come on. You'll have peace like you're supposed to have. You'll learn to be long-suffering like I'm long-suffering. Somebody help me up in here. You'll learn to have faith. Come on, y'all. See, that's what it's all about. That's where the Lord is trying to bring his people to. That's where we ought to be today. Amen. And then he says, see, let me just tell you this, y'all. It's hard to tell an apple tree from a pear tree when it's in first bloom. Think about that for a minute. It's hard to tell a pear tree from an apple tree when it's in full bloom. But when the fruit gets on it, when the fruit begins to grow, you know what kind of tree it is. There's... Everybody in here who comes in knows an apple tree from a pear tree. They look different, don't they? Pear looks different than apple. Let me tell you, you're different. If you belong to God, if you belong to the Lord, you're hooked up, you're connected to Jesus. Y'all, we're different. We're not like the world. We're different. We're not like the world, church. Come on, we belong to him. We, we're acting. We're, we're beginning to, God is beginning to mold us and make us like him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He, he, we're learning to flow and to walk in his power and his presence. Come on. We're learning to walk in what he walked in. The, oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. We learn to walk in the power and the presence of the spirit of the living God. We begin to bring forth fruit that's pleasing to the Father. We love people the way God loves people. Come on, church. We begin to act like him in every aspect of our life. Oh, Lord, help me up in here. And because we are connected to Jesus. Yes. We're connected to the vine. Amen. And then he says in the last part of verse 5, he says this, for without me, you can do nothing. There's nothing you can do to please the Father without Christ, y'all, without Jesus. People are trying to do it today. It's impossible to do. You can't live a good enough life to please the Father. It's impossible. No man's ever done that. The only one who pleased the Father was the only begotten Son of God. His name is Jesus. The only way we're going to please God is to be abiding in the vine, to be connected to Jesus. Hallelujah. We've got to learn to connect, y'all. you got to connect up with the Lord, and don't you dare let nothing break that connection. Come on, somebody help me up in here. Stay connected. Abide in God. Abide in the Lord. Abide in the vine. Let me tell you this. Jesus never commanded believers, never commanded believers to produce fruit. Never. Now listen to this. This is good. Fruit is the purpose. Oh, Lord, help me. Fruit is the purpose of the branch. But it's not the responsibility of it. Think about that for a minute. Did you hear that? The purpose of the branch is for fruit to grow. But it's not the responsibility of the branch. Because if the branch is cut off, guess what? Nothing's going to grow. So the responsibility is up to who? Jesus, the vine, who you're connected up to. That's where it comes. I don't want you to see this. All the branch has to do, y'all, is to remain connected. Think about that for a minute. All we got to do is branches, y'all, is stay connected to Jesus. Abide in Him. You see what I'm saying? Don't let nothing break that, break that connection. Because if you stay connected, the fruit will automatically come. Ain't that awesome? It, it just automatically it'll come, y'all. So quit. I'm going to tell you something right here. Quit trying to produce something in your life and just stay connected to Jesus. How many people are trying to cause something to happen? How many people are trying to produce something to happen in their life? Think about this for a minute. We're trying to cause the Lord. Lord, I done did this. I done did that. I'm supposed to be up here right now. I'm supposed to be blah, 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 blah. Whatever we're trying to birth, whatever we're trying to produce, God says, stop trying to produce it. 
connect up with me and I'll do it. Oh, somebody help me up in here. See, if you'll stay connected, God will make a way for you. See, you see what I'm saying? He'll do it. He'll do it in his time when we're ready for it. Stay connected. I got to say that again. Quit trying to produce something in your life. Just stay connected to Jesus. He'll produce it in his time if you'll stay connected to him. Whatever you need. Can I get another amen up in here? Now let me end it with this right here, y'all. Many years ago, Jesus came. He planted a vineyard. But the branches of that vineyard failed to produce good fruit. Jesus came, y'all, to do what no person or nation could do. And that was to produce good fruit. He's the only one, y'all. He's the only one who produced good fruit. Everybody else fell miserably short. Everybody. I don't care who there was. Everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody fell miserably short. Everybody did. He's the only one who produced fruit that was pleasing to the Father. So he's the vine. God is the husbandman. And every believer, y'all, we're the branches. Can't you see that? Jesus is the vine. The Father overshadowing everything. And we're part of that vine. We're the branches. That means wherever you go, wherever you go and you're hooked up, you're connected to Jesus. The presence of an almighty God is hovering over you, protecting you, watching over everything that belongs to him. Hallelujah. Because we belong to him. I don't care where you go. It's like God. There they are. There they are. I got to take care of them. I need to bless them. Oh, it's time for me to do this, do that. Can you see that? Because we're all attached together. So let us do this, y'all. Let us abide in him. Stay connected to the vine and begin to watch the fruit explode. Can I get an amen up in here? Watch the fruit just begin to grow and begin to, oh, Lord, to just manifest and begin to expand and begin to be weighted down until the harvest. Oh, thank you, Lord. Can we stand up on our feet and give God some praise in the house? Come on, y'all. Give God a big old clap of praise. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory be to God.